Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Will Cowan, I'm an aspiring pro triathlete and today I'm gonna to tell you about the two tests that I do which blow the 20 minute power test out of the water. So let's get into it. So this testing protocol was developed by my coach and someone he works with, a guy called Hayden Allen, who's a really talented cyclist, but also is doing a PhD in exercise physiology at Leeds Beckett University. So the testing protocol is two tests separated by one day. So I've done one on Tuesday and one on Thursday. And the first of the two tests is a ramp test. Now this starts off nice and easy, you have 10 minutes warm up, and then the three minute long stages build by 30 minutes each time. So you're looking to fail the test at around 28 to 31 minutes in. So the second of these tests is a three and 12 minute effort within an hour and a half. So you do your three minute effort, and then you have half an hour recovery before you do your 12 minute effort. I'll show you through the tests and how hard you have to go on them, they're pretty brutal. And then I'm gonna have a sit down with my coach and he's gonna talk us through why the testing's done, what it offers you over the 20 minute test and uh, a few takeaways that hopefully you guys can use as well. So let's get into the, uh, the testing. Okay, we're outside now and we're all ready to go for the first of the two tests. This is the ramp test. I've had a high carb lunch, I've weighed myself and I've calibrated my power meter, so there's nothing left to do but get into it. First, yeah, the warm up in the first three minutes done. That's three minutes at 2.30. Now to three minutes at 2.60. It's feeling, feeling fine, my heart rate's at like 1.30. It's comfortable at this point, but it should be. How's it feeling now? Um, still kind of like mid-tempo, so heart rate still 145. Feeling in control, but apprehensive for what's to come. I know it's gonna hurt. Oh my gosh. Oh. How was that? Oh. That was hard at the end. I kind of got through that 4 10 watt stage. Started the next one and you. It's just a bit too much. Yeah. Hung on for about 30 seconds. And then that was it, I had to call it. But I think that's the best I've done. Woo. So. Now I need to refuel well. And by that do you mean pizza? <laughs> Maybe a takeaway pizza. Ready for the next test, which is the three and 12 minutes on Thursday. So hopefully I can get recovered for them. <laughs> I'll see you then. Right, drinks made, three and 12 minute power test tonight. So it's three minutes first. I've got target powers from my coach based on how well Tuesday went. It's the, uh, the last bit of testing. So yeah, let's, uh, let's give it beans. Thirty seconds until the three minutes. 
To be fair, the 12 minutes, for me personally, isn't that bad. It's this three minutes that it's not a place you go very often when you're doing long distance try. So it's gonna hurt. 15 seconds. That was alright. That was alright, it really hurt. <laughs> Pain came off before. So I had to start a little bit after the Zwift. But I got out my wahoo. Oh. I think it was like 480 for the first two minutes. And then it kind of dropped down to 470. I was just clinging on to that 470 for the last minute. And just held it. So 470 watts for three minutes. I'll take that. Got 30 minutes easy now to recover. So really in every minute of that. And then into the 12 minutes. And this is fun. A few minutes later. Now I've got a, a little bit of a warm-up again before I hit the 12 minutes. Legs are feeling tired, but they should be. That three minutes is all out. I think I'm going to start it off conservatively and try and build, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. The proof will be in the pudding. Testing is done. Big up for that. <laughs> anyway, started up about 385, be able to 390 for the 12 minutes. So happy with that. I think it's better than last time I did it. And now, let's find out what that means. We'll pass it back to inside, Will, and uh, have a check with my coach and see what the, uh, the numbers mean. Oh, my hands. So much sweat. Yeah, we'll see what the numbers mean and then go from there. Cheers for that garage Will. Um, I think the best thing to do now is hand over to my coach Chris because he's the person that knows what he's talking about and I just do the cycling. So let's pass it over to Chris now. So basically when you look at the key determinants of endurance performance, you have your max, your VO2 max, you have what you can sustain of that, your submaximal power, and you have your efficiency. And what we're looking to determine with these two tests is the maximal side of it, give an estimate of your VO2 max power, and also your submaximal power, so what you can sustain of that max. With the uh, maximal one, we do a step test. So we basically look at your previous threshold and we write the steps of the test and the starting point. So you're getting to around 28 to 31 minutes uh, when you're failing the test. Basically where you finish within that um, step, we take a fraction of where you got to. It might have been 320, 350, 30 seconds in that, in that stage. Uh, we take a percentage of that to determine your VO2 max power. And that's set very nicely with uh, some of the results that we've compared to in lab testing too. And then the sub-maximal test is some critical power testing. There's a very mechanical explanation behind critical power. And it's all basically done through um, the relationship between uh, your power uh, and the time you can sustain of that. So if you imagine on the y-axis you've got the power uh, and on the x-axis you've got the time, over a very short period of time you're going to be able to hold a high amount of power uh, over a lesser period of time it's going to be slightly lesser power and over a long period of time you're going to be uh, holding much less power so you get this curve 
that we see on the graph. And basically, when you change the x-axis, you get a straight line, and the equation of that line is how we determine your critical power. What it also gives us is something called your W prime. That's basically anything above your critical power and it separates the very heavy and the heavy domain of exercise and all this basically means is your sustainable power so above that you're eating into your anaerobic energy source that are fixed and underneath that you can technically sustain that for a much larger period of time from uh, the results we get we're basically looking at the relationship between the maximal power and the sub maximal power so you might have a high max but you can't sustain very much of it or you might have a fairly low max and you can sustain quite a lot of it and that gives us implications of the training focuses we look at going forward the other advantage with looking at critical power and getting the w prime score is we get a pretty good idea how we can structure your intervals and your recovery based off your w prime score because as we know that is a fixed energy store so basically anytime you're above that critical power uh, you're in you're eating into that fixed store so we know uh, how long that's going to deplete uh, in your um, interval sessions and we can use that uh, to help build really specific sessions for you. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense as to why we do the testing. Now we're going to look at Will's results. So I'm just going to turn you around here. This test we did here in November. Uh, this one here was in February and this is the most recent one in May. So the key takeaways for Will is that the percentage of what you can sustain is critical power to his VO2 max has always been quite high, which is a really good thing. But basically that means that in order for him to improve, we kind of need to increase his capacity. And that is exactly what we've done with him. So in his interval sessions, basically what we've been doing is depleting this W prime initially. So doing a minute primer, maybe more just to bring this down and then doing some sustained work around his critical power. And that's worked really well for bringing up this max and it's also brought up the critical power too. So basically all the work we've done have been high intensity intervals in that very heavy domain. We've basically been using that VO2 max score in order to structure his sessions. I hope you'll agree that was really, really interesting and it's, it's really good to understand why the testing is done and what we can benefit from it and how that shapes things going forward. Now my coach Chris, super knowledgeable chap and he's so happy to answer any questions you might have so drop him a line over at pure performance coach and i'll stick the link to his website and his instagram down in the bio i think that means for me as well i've got a few more brutal vo2 max style sessions those sessions over critical power are really what's going to bring me on as an athlete so uh it's good to know where i have to work on if you've got this far in the video cheers for watching really appreciate it i hope it was interesting um if you could subscribe that'd be wicked i'm doing new videos every week at the minute so there will be consistency to my uploading i'll see you in the next one